our next speaker is with a company that is working to make it possible for people like you and me to go into outer space. Beth Moses was the assembly manager for the International Space Station. Let me repeat that. This woman was the assembly manager for the International Frickin' Space Station from design to completion, which blows my mind. And I hear she's even gonna ask some of you questions that future astronauts are asked before they get to go into space. So without further ado, please put your hands together for Beth Moses from Virgin Galactic. Space is truly a connector, a force for good that brings people together from all walks of life all across the globe. Consider this. So there are shockingly few things that the world has agreed to agree on. We all use different languages, different calendars, different spiritual beliefs, different political systems. And yet, still, there's only one defining coordinate system that the whole world uses. So space is the one place in which we are not divided. And yet, space is still a very exclusive destination. Only 559 people have ever been to space. Uh, these people are government employees headed to space for research, construction of the space station, or exploration. And they had a specific mission or function. We are at the dawn of space as a travel experience. Open to anyone is simply a destination. And I'm one of the few lucky enough to be part of the team architecting this experience. My teams are currently creating the customer cabin, the training mock-ups, and the spaceflight training program for Virgin Galactic's future astronauts on our spacecraft, VSS Unity. Uh, but this is really a moment in time for all of us, and I won't kid about that. Members of the public are going to be able to travel to space or send goods to space on a regular basis any moment now, and not just on Virgin Galactic. Several companies are now tackling aerospace projects that have been previously the domain of nations. Startup companies, such as Virgin Orbit, are reinventing launchers, and other startups are creating human spaceflight programs with space planes, capsules, and reusable first stages and launchers. Well, I'd like to give a shout out to all the aerospace startups in New Space who have made it off of PowerPoint, off of the actual launch pad, and in many cases, returned right back to that same launch pad to reuse hardware. Uh, all the companies have my utmost respect. If you look at the short experience of human history and travel, 100 years ago, there was no such thing as an aircraft. And roughly 50 years ago, there was no such thing as NASA. 17 years ago, there was no such thing as a permanent human settlement in space. So with any luck, with more continued flight tests, in the next few decades, kids will be taking summer holidays on Spaceship Two instead of going to Cancun or Ibiza. Uh, so, this is, so that's the one thing that I always ask our future astronauts. What are you most looking forward to on your flight that I can get the most right for you in training? I'd like to get three volunteers from the audience. I can't promise you I can jettison you into space from this stage. There's a lot of tech in the room, but probably not that much tech in the room. Um, but I can walk you through the trainer's consultation process with just a few questions so that you get an understanding of how we at Virgin Galactic intend to make the training program three of the best days you could have on this planet, at least. Hi, everyone. My name is Valerie. I'm from Arctic Startup, Finland. <laughs> My name is Alexei. I'm from a lot of countries, but to make it simple, I'm half German, half French, half Macedonian, living in the Netherlands. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Jesper Vin. I'm from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, and uh, I'm the CEO and founder of a company that uh, produces electric high-performance motorcycles. Uh, so, you have all purchased galactic tickets. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, so can you just maybe tell me briefly what excites you about space and what are you interested in getting out of your flight? Um, I come from a background as an anthropologist <clears throat> and um, I would basically see the world as not being planetary but universal mm. and um, I, I think it's important also for entrepreneurs to understand that mindset because every time we think from a national mindset, we're basically limiting ourselves to a confined space. But if we start seeing things as being universal and seeing ourselves as part as a whole, a holistic mindset, we're basically taking away borders from ourselves and basically how far we will reach within the world. 
So space is something that we should all grasp, and it's really not limiting us, but it's actually giving us the possibility to move further than we believe ourselves. That's a perfect segue, thank you. But what I can tell you is when you come to train, one of the things that I'm really interested in is making sure that you can savor that thought and that experience on your space flight. And so, for example, our vehicle from Apogee, from its highest point, has 12 windows and five cockpit windows that you can look out of. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to see 500 miles in either direction, 1,000 miles. I'm sorry, I don't know the kilometers offhand. But essentially, that's what you'll see. You'll see down to Earth, like the uh, southwestern quadrant of the United States and halfway down into Mexico. And you won't see borders. You'll see the Rio Grande. You won't see a wall of any kind between the US and Mexico. You will just see the planet in its whole and the lip of the atmosphere. To, uh, to kind of your point, you'll just see what connects us and not what divides us. Jesper, what do you want to get out of your space flight? Yeah, what I would like to take out of there is um, just fascination, being able to literally being in something that doesn't hold you, doesn't, I don't know, it's undescribable. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to describe it, I guess. I, I think you're right. I think it will be an indescribable experience. Um, I've been weightless hundreds and hundreds of times in my life, and you really strangely feel disconnected from Earth, and at the same time, both insignificant because you can't feel yourself, and also enthralled and excited because it is so much fun. <laughs> How about you, Valerie? What would you like to get out of your space flight? Yes, well, I really like what gentleman just said before me, Jasper, thank you very much for that. I think that definitely space travel is something for us to learn about us, to learn about the universe within us. Yeah. I've been interviewing one person, um, Jose from Zero to Infinity, the Spanish company that provides the uh, air balloon space <laughs> flights. And Basically, what he said was that he's doing the space flight thing for people who can afford it, so they can go to space and experience something that is called empathy effect, something that astronauts experience when they look on Earth from space, they see no borders, exactly what you said. They realize that they are nothing, exactly like you said, and they return on Earth with that higher degree of empathy towards living beings, all the living beings, nature, other people, and I think this is something, this is something really important for all of us to be able to evolve and go to the next level as a nation. And so I think opening space to all is going to bring all these philosophies and ideas back to Earth in a way that could transform all of us. Thank you so much. So what happens next? You will all arrive. Oh, can I get the slides back? at our spaceport in New Mexico. So this is where the training happens for roughly the week before your flight. This is a three-story building. The top floor is dedicated to astronauts, the astronaut lounge for training, suits and G and all the ideas we just discussed. The second floor is for health and mission control. And the first floor is for family and friends to view your space flight. Uh, on the bottom floor, there's launch viewing. And I kind of expect that your family and friends will sit and experience a really bad case of FOMO as they watch you launch to space. Uh, then you will board your spacecraft with two pilots and five fellow astronauts around dawn. Here's the spacecraft and the mothership, a dual fuselage White Knight II. Uh, and you will head out for your space flight. We all share one planet. That is an abstract mantra until you see it with your own eyes. And then I suspect it is something far more. Thank you.